Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here and we are back with episode 5 of our Michigan Let's Play series, follow along series as part of the uh, the CBGM, the the best online college basketball sim league for Draft Day Sports College Basketball 21. And well, last time on our, an episode we talked a little bit about the, the pitching scenarios we were looking at, the players we were targeting, and well, that sim has been run now. You're probably going to get this information slightly late to actually going live in the actual in the CBGM because obviously you don't want to give away pitches and targets, etc. But you know, it's good to come back and do a bit of a recap, see what's happened, see whether we were successful or not, and then what we're going to do going forward. So let's move on to the actual re recruiting uh, and see how how we got on. So you can see here, I've I've just immediately jumped us straight into the uh, the Midwest region, which is our region. And we, we're going to talk a little bit probably about some of the targets here, some of the surprises that I've observed. Um, you know, there's obviously more central um, news and media going on in relation to some of the top targets, but we can talk about our, our team specifically as well. So I guess the first thing off the bat that's really interesting is that McCray, Dan McCray, the guy who's been compared to Magic Johnson in the, the CBGM, he's a six foot seven, amazing guard he was mvp of indianapolis uh the india league camp which is the the top camp for the top 100 prospects so this guy was heavily heavily recruited by everyone he went to north carolina and so does a target that we were actually were, were in quite late on which was uh kurt linney you can see there we were eighth in his list and we, we made a decision last episode to kind of remove that scholarship didn't feel he was necessarily the right fit for us at this stage for Michigan. He ended up going to North Carolina as well. So North Carolina are going to have a very interesting team next year, getting um, two incredibly good prospects out of the Midwest region this year. But for those eagle die among you, you all know that we obviously offered a deal to this guy here, Peter Graves. We offered him a scholarship and we pitched him academics. You know, Michigan's academics is an A, so we, we had a good opportunity here. And well, we were very successful. We managed to pick him up, which I'm I'm delighted about. He is um he was ranked 192 nationally, uh, 21 for his position, um and fourth in his position for the region. So we've got a good prospect here. He is a three star prospect according to the uh, the network, the media that goes on in the game. And I I'm surprised that he is only a three star prospect. I think he's going to be a really solid four year guy for us. And the reason being is that you can see here his ratings. You know, all pretty. Pretty solid across the board. He's not great at anything. He can shoot inside, play a bit of defense, rebound, pass the ball, block, steal. He can do all the good things that you want. He's got the size. He's 6'10", 249 pounds, which is ideal because he can probably play both power forward and center, which is what we needed because we've got a senior coming off the books this year um, and a center. So he's going to plug straight into the rotation there. And, well, I'm surprised that nobody else really trying to chase him, to be perfectly honest with you, because... He was a top 10 player at Chicago. So in terms of the region, he was a top 10 player. So despite being three stars, his ratings look good. I was happy to basically throw him an offer and get him in. And I, I'm excited to see how he looks because I think he's going to be above what his projections are here. I think he's going to be a very solid rotation piece for us. He's not going to be elite, but he's a four-year guy who we can plug in. And he's probably hopefully going to be able to, to basically take some minutes up and you know be efficient and perform in those minutes, which is kind of... What we need for Michigan, we need to develop some of that bench because if I go back to our team very quickly, you can see here we've got you know some really good elite starters who are you know juniors, sophomores, and we've got one senior really that's that's in the starter that's elite. Um, but beyond that, we have a lot of guys who are one and two stars, got development room, but you know they're not ready to play, and we need to kind of get that rotation. We need a good eight man rotation in my opinion before we can start going off after some of the other. The other better stars that are available in, in recruiting we need, to, we need to make sure we have that depth that performance consistently our prestige will hopefully go up our performances will go up and then we can target those five star guys so how do we get on with the other guy so obviously we were looking at someone else so let's go let's jump straight across and obviously you can probably see from the committed that he he hasn't committed to us at the moment so we will just jump into the midwest region in our calls and watch list and we'll just talk about that so you can see here Colin Brown was the other guy that we've got an offer out for at the moment. I'm excited to hopefully try and snag this guy. Again, he's not massively elite at anything. He is a 115 national prospect. He is a four-star prospect, actually, rather than Graves, who's a three-star. But I'm, I'm excited to see how he does because, again, he, he was a top 25 prospect at the Chicago Prep. 
um, rev, you know, prep camp, which is good. Uh, means he's going to be a good, good player off the bat. He's not going to be terrible, which is kind of what we need. We need guys who are going to be able to come in and play straight away. He's good at everything, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, his inside shots are a little bit lower than I possibly would like for someone who's going to play in sort of the backcourt positions, but his outside shot kind of makes up for that. He's a good scorer, passer, handler. He's the kind of guy who will come in, I think, and he won't necessarily need the ball to be effective. He can do a bit of defense, he can do a bit of stealing, he can handle it, he can shoot when needed, but he's not going to need to put up volume shots to be a, a good player at this level. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how that materializes. So we're still going to keep pitching him, we're still going to look at him. So I think the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to watch more film. You know, it's always good to do that. We're going to just give him another little text, I think. It says here, I believe, that um, location was his number one priority. If I can find that. I know it says it here, but I'm, I'm sure we had it. But we're just going to text him and just and just ask him again. Um, okay, so he's not... There you go. It's very important for him. We're nice to know about facilities and discipline. And let's just ask him about his parents. Um, and we'll just double check the playing time. Okay, so we've not got a great deal more information out of him. To be perfectly honest with you, we're still going to go in and pitch location, I think, for him. Um, so we're going to try and get him again, pitch his location. We're going to visit him again. So in terms of our two backup guys, obviously we talked a little bit last time about the likes of Rod Wilson and the, the likes of Jarvis Jensen. Another guy that I did look at was Mike Van Leer, but obviously we, now we've got Graves, we don't necessarily need to look at look at him now. So we, we're going to just basically look at these two guys and then kind of decide who we're going to pitch our next one to. Um, we've got three pitches to use. We might as well go for the two guys who are backup, really, and maybe look to see if there's someone else that we want to throw a, a pitch at. So Rod Wilson's the other guy that we were looking at. We don't have a great deal of information about him at this moment in time in terms of what, what pitch he wants. But um, we, we'll just drop him a text again and see if we can we can find out a bit more information. So playing close to home is very important. That's about as much information as we got out of him. So Rod Wilson, I think we're going to pitch you location. I think we did that last time anyway. So we're going to pitch you location and visit you again. And Jensen, I believe we've got a little bit more information. Um, we'll watch your film as well. We will... Um, Probably give you another text, try and see if we can find out a bit more information about you. Okay, so he's not necessarily that helpful. We'll, st we'll pitch playing time, I think, for you um, and, and, and visit you. So that's all of our um, pitches done for the guys we were targeting. Obviously, we've got to look at some other guy, another person who we can you know, possibly be a, another backup option for us. So you see, I've definitely shortened down our list here so to what we are. I mean, if I go back to sort of all regions on our list we've we've got 19 guys on here it's it's definitely shortened a lot and um, because there's been a lot of com, com, you know committed guys now who've, who've made decisions but uh we've got john cooper as an interesting prospect we don't know a great deal about him that's the only thing obviously he doesn't do any camps as well because he's an international player so we we might might have thrown a pitch um possibly but i'm, I'm more leaning towards trying to get that backcourt player really um in, in terms of what we need Obviously, Carroll, we're, we're, we're well behind on him. He was only a 25. It was a 25 at Indy camp, actually. Did he play in Chicago? He didn't play in Chicago camp, from what I can see. So we kind of got many, too many options, really, outside of these guys. Uh, we, we could look at flaws. I mean, but he was decent, not spectacular at Indy. We might throw him a pitch, possibly. Um, we've got a bit of information about him. I'm interested to see if I can get um, Carroll up, maybe. But um, we'll, we'll watch his film again. Just we'll see. I mean, his location is, is is key for him, it seems. But we don't necessarily need that front court player. Like I said, I'd like to get someone in the wing sort of guard positions, to be perfectly honest with you, as well, to keep it kind of balanced. So I think what we'll do, we look at powers. He was decent, not spectacular. Decent. We've got Tim Robinson, who's a shooting guard, six at five shooting guard. He's a great defender. He's a great three and D guy. I think we we'll, we'll we'll try and find a bit of information about him. I think perhaps we'll host him. We'll watch some film. 
Let's text him, see if we can find out a bit of information about him in our remaining minutes here. Okay, so location is only one of the things you're considering. And we've run out of time. Ugh. Okay, so that would be a gamble if we did pitch to him, to be honest. So we've got Carabao we could look at. I mean, Floor's just decent, not spectacular, so we're not necessarily going to worry about him at this stage. He didn't stand out, so Smith can go because he didn't stand out. Um, and I'm not necessarily too worried about him. I think we just we just pitch Robinson. We just gamble. We'll take a gamble. We might as well. Or do we go for Carowell? I mean, we could gamble for Carowell. I mean, we might as well. I mean, teams are probably going to be chasing after him. We don't have enough information, to be honest. I think we just go Robinson. We'll just, we'll just throw Robinson a pitch. Uh, location, we can probably... It doesn't have much parent control. I think we just pitch location. We can just... Look, at the end of the day, we've got a spare slot. We can pitch it and see how it goes and go from there. So, I mean, that that's pretty much where we're at. We've got one scholarship left. I'm really hoping that Colin Brown ties us up uh, next sim, really. If we get him and if we get um, obviously get Graves, our recruiting class will not be looking too bad, if I'm perfectly honest with you. You know, we, 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 we went big. We didn't necessarily get anything. We've had to double down. And, you know, we're getting guys who I think can come in and fill some gaps for us, to be perfectly honest with you. As I said, we've got Larry Beak coming off this season. That's going to be a big blow. You know, Iacona's going to obviously take that slot probably in a shooting guard. Then I'm hoping Brown's passing ability is enough to play the guard positions so that we can put him in probably as a sort of a point guard, six-man type guy probably, um, alongside the likes of um, probably got likes of Shelton and, and, and Seymour who are going to have to probably play point guard again for us next year, which is going to be a tough, tough ask for us. I still got Osler if he doesn't declare. I mean, the other question we've got to ask ourselves is we do have these two small forwards. I mean, we've got the freshman, uh, Nick Campbell here, and, and Chris Buchanan, who are um, not, not necessarily great at this point. They do have some development room. Do we want to necessarily redshirt any of them? Um, I, I'm probably leaning towards no, because they are they're scheduled to come off the books at, at different times, you know, because of their, their four years. I, I can't see them declaring. And, and to be honest with you, I kind of would be like be nice to get them off the books fairly quick because we'll we'll keep that that trend going of rotating them around. Um, we will have a gap there certainly if Scotty Olsler decides to declare for the draft. I mean, we we will definitely be heavily leaning on one of these guys next year, and that's going to be a bit of a dip, but something we'll have to just deal with. I mean, we can't we can't assume people will declare or not declare. We have to work with with what we've got, and and the two gaps we're going to have next year are shooting guard and at centre. So we have to try and address those pretty much straight away. Um, and then in terms of the front court, I'm I'm debating whether um, Singletary whether we redshirt this guy because I mean we've got um, Daniel Sweetening and and Belfares to kind of play those minutes, and I would really like to try and hold on to this guy for a little bit longer and let him develop. He 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 doesn't look great at this moment in time, but he looks like he's going to be a really efficient foul drawing stretch forward. And I'm wondering whether we, we, we want to do, use him um, going forward rather than actually using him at the moment. Because you can see he's only been playing four minutes for us in terms of what the current depth chart says. So I might, um, I think I will go in and, um, and, and redshirt this guy. He's, he's got that potential and we kind of want, we want him to have some of that potential fulfilled before he moves on probably to a pro career. So we might as well, we might as well try with that. And he's not going to play many minutes to be honest with you. I'm happy with playing Daniel, um, Sweetwine, Belairs, and, and Johnson if, if need be. So we'll probably redshirt him, I think. So that kind of brings us to a conclusion as to where where we are at this moment in time in terms of recruiting and things. I'll probably come back uh, next time with an update, hopefully, of where we are. Hopefully we've got Brown secured. Would be, that would be awesome if we got him secured. And, um, and then we can really talk and really focus on what we're going to do going forward in terms of this year, in terms of strategy and, and gameplay and, and seeing how we get on. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. I mean, 
In terms of other recruiting players, I think it's probably worth just having a quick look at some of the ones who committed. Just just a very, very quick snapshot. So we'll go to the committed. We won't look at ours. We'll just look at the full recruit, recruit list. You can see, obviously, Jones went to Kentucky straight away. Carolina took two of the, the top four players, which is just insane. And they also took the 18th player. So they've managed to acquire probably an elite shooting guard, an elite small forward, and an elite point guard. That team is going to be very scary next year, if I'm honest with you. That's, that's just a crazy recruiting class for Carolina. Um, elsewhere, actually, it's been pretty nicely split, to be honest. There is a nice little mix. Um, you can see here that, no surprise, Louisville, with their experience, they has picked up a couple of guys as well in the sort of the top top 50 or so. Uh, well, not in the top, that's within the top 40, I think, yeah. Yeah, within well, in top 40, 35 there. So, interesting to see how these human G GMs or coaches are, are doing on recruiting, and, and we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, in terms of us, we're focusing a little bit outside this, as I've said before because we, we, we were a little bit hindered, if I'm honest, with the, um, the our recruiting ability. We're certainly going to have to address that come next off-season. Off Probably replace Phil Martelli with someone who can actually recruit better and, and go from there. But if you're enjoying this series, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Did we maybe go too low with this recruiting class of who we've targeted? Um, do you guys think we're going in the right level for Michigan? Is there someone else that you would have probably looked at? Um, or, or maybe another strategy to take. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts because I'm still learning with this game, certainly. In particular, recruiting is something that's completely new to me. Um, I haven't played a draft day sports college basketball game for about three years, so this is a little bit of a, a learning curve, and we're getting there. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get in these, these guys who are going to be four-year players for us and develop them and, and utilize them in our system and become a really, really strong um team in the Big Ten Conference and hopefully hopefully a good challenging team in terms of the uh, the national championship and we'll see how it goes. We'll come back next time and hopefully hopefully we'll have two two scholarships verbally agreed to sign with us. That's the plan and we'll see how it goes, see how it plays out next time.